Hi there, my name is Matt Osgood. This is the second in a series of videos looking at using a Persona Studio Live Series 3 desk in the studio. The first video in the series showed you how to get sound from your computer through the desk and out into your speakers. So if you literally got your desk out of its box five minutes ago, do check that video out. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set the desk up to work together with Studio One and also how to begin to use your desk as an incredibly powerful and flexible audio interface. So let's begin. After the initial setup covered in the first video, the next thing that we need to do to get the desk working properly with Studio One is to change some settings in the UCNet menu. Uh, UCNet is Presonus protocol that enables remote control and audio transmission between their hardware and software products and it enables really tight integration with Studio One, but it's not set up to do that by default. So I hit the UCNet button in the master control section and I've got options here for software control, control network and transport controls. Now the control network section I can leave, but in the software control drop down, if I use the encoder knob to scroll down to the bottom, you can see it's got Studio One and the name of my PC. So if I select that, and you can see it's recognized my version of Studio One. Now I also need to change the transport controls because by default, as you can see, they're set up to work with the onboard SD card recording facility. I want to change them to software control to control Studio One. Now, you've got these four transport controls within the master control section. You also have shift and return to zero is rewind, shift and play is fast forward. So you've got the full range of controls available. And the next major things that we need to look at are setting up inputs into Studio One and then monitor mixes for musicians, which is where using the Studio Live Desk as an audio interface really comes into its own. It's very straightforward using this desk to set up up to 16 mono or 8 stereo monitor mixes, all with different balances and including effects like reverb and delay to help singers out, and all of those monitor mixes with effectively zero latency. Now, how helpful this will be to you depends largely on how many musicians you typically record at once, whether you tend to use predominantly live instruments or VSTs. But even for someone like me in a small setup where I'm normally only recording one or two audio inputs at once, it is incredibly useful. Before we set up monitoring through the desk, though, we need to turn input monitoring off within Studio One. So this is how you do that. So here's the outline of the song that I'm going to be recording. Uh, it's just a very simple setup so far. I've got tracks for piano, for acoustic guitar, and a couple of vocal tracks here. And if I click between the different audio tracks, you can see that both the red record icon, indicating that the track is record armed, and this blue speaker icon, indicating that input monitoring is on, follow my selection. But if I'm wanting to monitor through the desk, I don't want input monitoring on at all. So to turn it off, you need to go to Studio One, Options, Advanced, and then to Console, and then uncheck the box for Audio Track Monitoring Follows Record, which I think this is on by default. Now if I uncheck that box, if I click Apply and OK, and now if I clear Input Monitoring on this track, then if I select different tracks, you can see that the Input Monitoring icon remains off. So it's just the red record icon that follows my selection now. You can turn that behavior off as well if you want in the same dialog box. I'm going to leave it on for now. Uh, and now we need to set up some inputs for recording. So if we go back into the Studio One Options dialog and then click Song Setup down here and Audio I.O. Setup and then we've got tabs for inputs and outputs. So in the last video we set up these outputs for the main stereo out and for the click channel. So now if we have a look at the inputs tab, you may have a whole list of channels here. Um, you can either remove any you're not going to use or just ignore them um, if it doesn't bother you. I'll just get rid of them all for now. Okay, now 
what you create and how you name them is obviously going to be down to what makes sense for you. Say if you're going to constantly have different instruments coming in or whether you've got, uh, for example, a set of drum kit mics permanently patched into inputs 1 to 10. So I've got a stereo pair of Presonus PM2 mics, which are great on acoustic guitar and piano. I'm going to set those as a stereo channel using channels 1 and 2. So if I click Add Stereo and inputs 1 and 2 are selected, and then click apply. And I'm going to name this PM2. And I've also got a Presonus PX1 large diaphragm condenser for vocals. So I'm going to create a mono channel for that using channel 3. So click add mono, hit apply, and I'm going to name that PX1. And I want to make this my new default template along with the outputs that I set up in the last video. So I click Make Default and hit Yes. And we're done. So back to my channels. So I want my piano and my acoustic guitar tracks to be stereo with the PM2s as inputs. So if I select this icon, change them to a stereo channel and it's selected the first available input which is the PM2. Do the same for the acoustic guitar. And for the lead vocal, I want those to be using the PX1 input. So just select that from the drop down. There's PX1, channel 3, and do the same for the backing vocal. And I'm good to go. I've got my inputs set up and working. So now I'm going to set up my monitor mix. So here's my channels 1 to 24. I'm just in the regular bank of faders, I'm not in the user bank that we began to set up in the last video, although we'll go into that in just a moment. And I've got channel 1 selected, and I want to make this a stereo channel for my PM2 mics. So I'm going to hit the stereo link button here, and then if I go into settings, and within the stereo link options select names, and now when I rename that PM2, the same name will be applied to both channels 1 and 2. And then if I hit select on channel 3, and then I'm going to name this PX1. And now if I go into my user bank, in the last video we set it up so this fader controls the stereo output from the PC. This fader has the uh, click track coming into it, both of those through USB. And now if I hit select on the first fader and scroll up using the encoder, then I've got the PM2 here on channels 1 and 2. Now if I just select one side of it, because it is a stereo linked channel, then all the moves that I make with this fader and all the changes I make to EQ and so forth will be mirrored across both halves of the stereo channel. So it's only taking up one fader within my user bank, which is great. If I select on the next one, select the PX1, and there we go. So I've got my PM2s, both of them controlled on this channel. PX1 is here, and then my stereo output and click track over here. And I now want to set up Mix 1 for monitoring. So if I select Mix 1 here, now I want this to be a stereo mix as well. So again, I hit the stereo link button, and now AUXs 1 and 2 are linked together. Now if I wanted to monitor AUX 1 uh, on headphones, then I could go into my Edit button here in the Monitor section. So headphones are selected, and then I could just select Mix 1, and you can see it's selected Mix 1 and 2 together. And then if I plugged headphones into the desk, that would be what I would hear. Alternatively, if you've got a multi-channel headphone amp, you just connect that up using the XLR outs on the back panel. Now just a note, when you're setting up stereo mixes, if I select the, uh, the stereo out from the, the PC here, the pan control for stereo channels becomes a width control. And by default, when you're setting up an aux mix, the width is set to zero so that both halves equally come through in the middle. Now I want to set it to stereo, so if I turn the pan control up, you can see it uh, separating there to show that the width is now set to 100%. Now, back to uh, mix one. Here we go, and into the settings menu, and this is really important. 
So the flex mix mode is set to aux rather than subgroup or matrix, and that is what we want. But the aux pre mode is set to pre one, which is not what we want. Pre one means that the input channels go to the aux mix after the initial gain and the high pass filter on the channel, but before all of the channel processing, such as EQ and compression. Now, Pre-1 is probably the setting that you would want if you were in a live setting, because if you are using wedge monitors, adding compression in that context would probably make feedback much more likely. In a studio setting though, we want all of that processing available to our monitor mixes so we can make our performers sound awesome and enable them to give their best performance. So I need to select Pre-2, which is still pre-fader, but it's post all of the other channel processing. So. Back to the main AUX screen, you can see I've got some processing available on the main AUX mix. I've got a six band EQ, I've got compression, a limiter, I've got a graphic EQ. Now I'm gonna apply some processing to individual channels. So the only thing I'm gonna set up now is a limiter, turn the power on, and then set the threshold fairly high this is just so that, say I had a bunch of performers in the studio, someone unplugged a live mic or knocked something over, then whoever's listening to this monitor mix won't get their hearing shredded. Okay, so I'm now ready to set up a rough balance uh, within mix one. I've got my mics here, stereo pair, my PX1, I've got my playback from studio one, and I've got the click track. There's still loads more that I can do. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to add reverb and other effects to your monitor mixes to help your performers give their best, and also how to use Presonus QMix and Universal Control apps to give musicians control over what they hear and also save engineers masses of time. See you in the next video.